Hi, this is Wallace from Capturing Reality, and I'm going to show you a low poly workflow. Often in photogrammetry, we end up making gigantic models with millions of triangles and a huge number of textures. This can be very impractical for a lot of applications. For instance, matte painters and VFX artists don't always have time to wait for such big models to render. And models this big are unlikely to work smoothly in any real-time applications. Sometimes the best way to deal with this is to reduce the poly count to just a small handful of triangles. This video is meant for absolute beginners to get to grips with the basics of such a workflow. The idea is to understand the principles and then adapt the workflow for your specific needs. This is my asset and I'm actually only going to be doing this main building here and I'm going to make the geometry as basic as possible, probably more basic than you actually might use. I'm going to turn it into 20 triangles. And I'm going to have to play around with the textures a little bit because, as you can see, I couldn't get the drone around the back, so that's not textured. And this side is fairly uninteresting, um, so I'm going to copy this side with the lovely wood up here. And I have a chimney on the roof, so I'm going to copy these tiles from this side of the roof onto this side. So the method is to take it into Blender and use that as just a, a guide um, to just model from scratch. So I've made a 10,000 triangle model here and I will export that. So I'm just going to click on it. I'll show you it in solid mode. There you go. It's enough so that Blender won't slow down and I can roughly see what I'm doing. So mesh model, export dense mesh model. And I'm going to save it to this folder here. And if you look here, the transformation preset is Blender. That's not the default. So make sure you choose that. And also make sure you use an info file because when we bring it back in, it needs to reverse all the transformations so that it goes to the exact same position. Okay, that didn't take very long. Let's go into Blender. Now, for a change, don't delete the cube because that's what we're going to be modeling with. Um, as I said, we're going to make it as simple as possible. So file, import, and OBJ. Then navigate to your model and import OBJ. And there it is. Let's make a X-ray view and click on the cube. What I'm going to try and do is, first of all, just make this cube match the bottom half, everything apart from the roof. And the buttons for that is I'm, right now I'm using the central mouse button to move around. But if I let go of it and then hold down Alt and then scroll, you can see if I scroll and hold down Alt, it snaps into orthographic views there. Now, if I press G that's, and then move the mouse, I can move the cube and then if I cl left click then it'll just stay in that position and I can also use scale and then whichever axis I want or I, if I don't press an axis it scales the whole cube but if I say press uh, X now I can scale it on the X axis and then click and then that's registered and also the same with R for rotate um, you can either move it or you can type in a value like 90 um, but I don't want to do that I'm going to press escape so I'll be using those controls and I will fast forward and then uh, we'll do the roof. Okie dokie, so um, that's the bottom half done. So we just need to do the roof part now. So I'm going to press tab to go into uh, edit mode. And there you can see my vertices there. And if I press control and R, it makes a little slice there. If I click the mouse once, and don't move it and then click it twice then those are set and I've split down the center there so I'll select these two points and press G and Z and then that moves upwards until I've made the roof shape and there we've got my general house shape I'm just gonna add a bit of geometry in here I'll select these two points here and if I right click and go to connect vertex pairs and I'll do the same with these two points here. 
Okay, that is my house almost ready. I'm now just gonna delete these two faces on the bottom. So I'll go to face select mode, select that one, oh, wrong one. Now that one and then shift and that one and X and delete the faces. Um, we don't want those because they'll be using up real estate on our um, texture map. So uh, that's the model ready. Now it's time to fix the UVs. So I'll go back to vertex mode and select a vertex and press A to select all the vertices. Okay, now I'm gonna go into edit mode, UV editing, and you can see the unwrap is pretty horrible and unusable. So I'm gonna go to UV, smart UV project, and OK, and there we have it. Um, let's go into X-ray mode, uh, just so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. On the parts that we don't want, we're just going to um, put them right up in the corner here and make them tiny. So they're still on the UV map, and then later we can we can move them back. So we're going to try and use up as much space here as possible uh, with the bits of the texture that we actually want. So for example, I'm just going to show you at the beginning, we're getting rid of this side here. So if I select all those vertices, um, we've got this section here, I'll select one vertex and press A, and then I press S and I can do point 0.1 to make it tiny, click, and then G, and then hide it up in the corner here. Okay, so again, I'm just going to do that for every single part that um, I don't really want and I'm going to replace with another part. I'll select this point here, press A, and you can see it's starting to make a bit more sense because we only want these sections here. So now I'm going to try and use as much space up as I can. Um, so let's start with this side. Press A, so I've got the whole thing, and I'll press R, and then 180, and then click. G and S, scale it up, and then G again. So we're using quite a lot of area up that, and I'm gonna put the two other squares in there using the same tools, the bits that I actually wanna keep. Okay, so when you got it roughly right now, you can just start moving it around and just fill as much as you can up. Great, so now my model is ready to go. I'll just press tab to go out of edit mode and make sure just your cube is selected. And now we're gonna go to file, export, and OBJ. Navigate to where you imported the model from and make sure to click on the exact same model because uh, the RC info, info file has the same name so it won't be able to find the RC info file to import it with the right transformations if you don't write over the same model. And also very importantly, check this selection only button, selected only button. So it only exports the cube. And export Wavefront OBJ. Here we are back in Reality Capture. And first of all, before you import the model, go to Mesh Model and go to the texture settings here. You can see I've changed this. This isn't the default, the default's 8K, and we want to import it with a 4K texture. You can make 2K or 1K. I mean, you know, if we're going really low poly, then normally you would just go down to 1K, but I'm going to use um, 4K so that you can just see the texture a little bit better in the video. So let's import the model. Same one as you exported. And there it is. First, delete this texture here. Oh no, you can't delete it. Okay, I'll just show you it. Um, it's black. We'll delete it in the middle in a minute when we've uh, made made some other textures. So we're going to reproject from this model, model one with 77 million triangles um, and 11 8K textures onto this uh, tiny model, just 20 triangles with a single 4K texture. So go to tools, texture reprojection, um, and your source model is model one, result model is model four, and we do want a normal map. So reproject, 
And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, that looks uh, rubbish. Uh, it does in parts, but that was expected because these bits which are all blurry are taking up tiny parts of the texture map. We're going to play with the UVs so that we can steal these really good bits. But first, we want to get rid of uh, this weird sort of shed bit on the side. And we'll do that in substance. And I'll also show you a sneaky way of doing it in Photoshop. So let's export this model with its textures. Mesh model, export dense mesh model. And we'll call it 20 tries, 20 tries. Uh, I've got caps lock on, mm, never mind, that'll be fine. And, oh, we forgot to delete that texture, so we'll just opt to not, this is the black texture here, so let's just say we don't want to export that one. We want our color layer two, and we want our normal layer. And yeah, we can keep Blender. Okay, great, now we're gonna fix this wall in substance and I'll also show you a sneaky way of doing it in Photoshop. I'm just going to show you how to fix the bit of texture in Substance Painter. So go to File, New, and then navigate to the 20 triangle model. I'm going to make a 4K project, then click OK, then go to File, Import Resources, Add Resources, then navigate to the two textures and set them as textures. Import them to the current session and then import. Okay, so let's get rid of this layer here. Let's chuck it in the bin and then click on a new fill layer. And then scroll down to the base color and drag and drop in the diffuse then go to the normal layer and drag and drop in the normal and we'll change this view to base color view um, now we're just going to try and get rid of this area here I'm just going to use the clone stamp tool so right click on your fill layer and go to add paint We're going to change that to pass through. Then let's go to the normal layer and change this to normal and this to pass through. Okay, now let's click on the clone stamp tool. Oh, and then we'll get rid of these, a lot of these other maps. So we'll go to the texture set settings and let's get rid of metallic and roughness and height okay and just you need to make sure this normal's checked here press V to take a sample and then you can stamp and quickly let's check out our normal and make sure it's doing it there too. Okay, great. We are working on both maps simultaneously, which is great. Okay, so I'll just fast forward this section. And there you go. It's by no means a masterpiece, but we've got rid of that thing and it's gonna be look a little bit less messy. So now we can export our textures textures file export textures and um, let's just find somewhere to export them to we'll make a folder called substance textures okay and export I'm just going to show you a quick sneaky way to fix your textures in Photoshop using an action so open your textures probably work on the diffuse go to window actions select new action and record and then you can just use Photoshop tools to uh, play with the texture I quite like the patch tool
Okay, and that's not exactly a masterpiece, but uh, it doesn't really need to be. I'm just demonstrating the technique. We can then just stop recording the action and then open up the normal map here and go back up to the action. It's called action one. I should have named it something a bit better and then just press play. And then it does the exact same edits um, on the normal map. And then you can just save those maps. So file save as, and again, I'll make a new folder and call it and put the normal in there. Okay. And file save. Oh dear, I saved over to the original. Uh, file, save as, and Photoshop textures, and save there. So there we go. Um, now it's time to go into Blender and uh, get the UVs back in the right places. So this is the final stage of the video in Blender. Um, press X, delete the cube this time, and File, Import, and OBJ, then navigate to your 20 triangle model. And let's make a shader viewport. Make it so you can actually see the model here. Again, flat and texture. Okay, and we still have our broken, our bad textures here. So we need to load in the good ones. So I will load in the diffuse here. Let's use the Photoshop ones. There, that vanishes. And again, make sure you use the exact same um, edit uh, to use the normal map. Okay, now we can go into the UV editor. And again, let's make it so we can actually see what we're doing. Uh, flat and texture. And press A there, and then we can see our UVs over here. So I'm just going to show you um, the more general approach. I'll just quickly, let's, let's start on the other side here. Just make it in the middle there. Um, that side is just using this tiny little bit of the texture map up here. So I can use the same controls as I used before. So R, 180, and then Enter, and then G, move it here, and then S to scale it. And there you can see it's just taking that texture there. Um, I can do S, Y to shrink it down a little bit like that, and then G, and anyway. You get the idea, so I will just fast forward through me doing the other sides as well. And as you can see, the roof got onto this bit of texture here, so we need to edit this this bit, which actually was like finely textured. So I'll just press A and uh, S, X to shrink it down there, and actually S, Y, shrink it down that way a bit as well, and then G, move it over. Um, there we go. So that's pretty much there. Oh, we can see I've actually got a bit of tiles on this side here. So we probably want to shrink down that side as well. So A and then S, shrink the whole thing down. That's probably an easy way of doing it. Okay, now we got rid of that. Um, you can play around with it for a long time. You can see actually on the roof here, this is a bit of a mess there. So I will just select those two points. Okay, shift and those two points. And now I've got the roof. So you can see that it doesn't go in a straight line there. So if I go back to the roof, you can see as I move a single vertex, I'm just going to click on this one here and press G. You can see it all like lines up uh, nicely. Oh, it's gone a bit too far. Anyway, uh, you get the idea. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.